What's that old saying? Defensive programming wins championships. Let's look at test path and how we can use it to apply some defensive programming techniques. Test path is a commandlet that simply returns a true or false value based on the path that you provide it. So if I run it on my profile path, it's gonna return true. If I give it something that's not there, it's gonna return false. And that makes it really easy to use test path in logic statements. So I have an if statement here, and this if statement evaluates if something is true, it will run the script block. If it isn't, then it won't run the script block. So when I run it, the folder exists, and if I remove that, then it won't do anything. I can do the reverse as well and check if something does not exist. I could use the full not notation, but I'm just gonna use the shorthand and test path has to be inside of its own uh, parentheses here to become evaluated first and then it'll evaluate whether it is or is not. So when I run this, the folder does not exist. So our code over here in the script block is executed as well. And we're not limited to folders with test path. We can also check the existence of files. So this is a file here which does exist so it returns true and if I break that path then it's gonna return false. And we are not limited to files and folders. We can even use the registry in PowerShell. So I'm pointing to H key current users and then software and checking to see if Microsoft is there, which it should. There's probably a huge problem with my system if it doesn't and it returns true. Is micro hard there? Probably not. And it's not. Although somebody probably should start a company called MicroHard. That would be hilarious. And then we can use this in our scripts to apply defensive programming techniques. So in this bit of code here, I'm trying to create a bunch of items, but I need this this path uh, in my desktop called test or this folder. And if it doesn't exist, I'll probably get a bunch of errors when I run this other code. But by checking if it exists or not first and then creating it, it saves me the time of either creating those files or erroring out a bunch of stuff. Now I know it wouldn't make much difference, but this is uh, just an example because I am creating it here at first anyway. So it's not the best example, but you'll see that if I run it again, my evaluation is run first and none of this other code is executed. So that is a way that you can check for items to be there first before you either create them or manipulate them. So say you're running a get content on a file. If that file doesn't exist, then you may want to throw up your own error and have your script do something else uh, instead of just erroring out and then stopping. So we can go down here and what if we want to check the path for like a specific kind of file. So let me run this get child item here first. And you'll see that we have four executables. I'm filtering it to look for exes in this folder. And then I'm gonna run a test path on what.exe. So let's run this test path now. And it should be there, right? Why did it return false? Well, I've used this path type that lets me signify whether I wanna look for a leaf or a container and let's go ahead and pull up the IntelliSense or I can check for any, but if I change it to container, it does return true. Why did that, hap why did that happen? Because maybe you saw it, um, that is actually a directory. It wasn't an exe file. So if we were writing a program that was just looking for all the exes and counting them, that would be a problem because that's a folder. But if we express that we wanna look for a leaf, which is the files items, it's not a container, which is a directory item, then this will evaluate that it is in fact false. So that's a way that we can specify clearly uh, what we're trying to look for in our test path. So we were looking for a leaf, but what.exe is a folder and it returns false. So you'll see in this next example where that can come in handy. So what if we wanted to check if a folder includes exe files? We have this test path right here. Let me just clear this out first. Uh, we wanna use the include here, and we're saying, does this folder include any exe files? And I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, and you'll see that it does have one that we created in there. And in my path, I have to give it the wildcard because I want it to look at all of the items 
inside of this test folder. So when I provide the include, I tell it to look for all exes, it returns true because there is in fact an exe file in there. What if I wanted it to find everything besides an exe file? I can use the exclude and we can run it. And it is in fact true. There are other items in there besides that exe file or exe files in general. If I wanted to be more specific, I could put the exe name in there, but we're just looking for exe files. And it's returning true because there's a folder in there called testing. But what if I wanted it to only look for other leaf items or file items? Well, we can use the option that we learned up there, path type leaf. And if I run it, you'll see that it returns false because there are no other leaf items in there um, besides that exe. If I add something else in there, let's go ahead and add a text file. I'll just let that save. And I run the code again, you'll see that it returns true because there are uh, other items in there that are not exe files. So that's a way that we can do a test on an entire folder for either a specific item, specific types, or just in general looking at the file names. So we have something else down here. Now this is specific to PowerShell 3 only. So if you don't have PowerShell 3 yet, you can download it and try this out. We have newer than, and there's also older than, but we're gonna look at newer than to see if a path is newer than a specific date and it has to be in proper date time format. So I'm looking to see if my Windows folder is newer than today. And it is in fact not newer than today, but is it newer than 2002? It is newer than 2002. And of course, as I said, there is older than. So those are a number of different ways that you can use the test path commandlet to run Boolean checks on files, folders, leafs, containers, um, and put those in your evaluations to run specific code, whether you want to create folders or you want to grab content from folders, whether you want to check if a specific folder only has certain types of files. There's lots of ways that you can do these checks and pull back a Boolean value and then insert that into logical statements such as if to uh, pretty much filter what's happening inside of your scripts. So that's it, the test path commandlet. Thanks for watching.